Coming up this week on The Happy House, create a festive holiday decoration out of birch logs, and then learn how to make your own compost bin that can be stored right under your sink. And we're back at Mama's Happy making our own chalkboards. Maybe you're able to get your hands on um, cabinet doors. So this is another thing you can pick up at um, home reuse centers or salvage yards, and many times as inexpensively as a dollar. You won't want to miss it. Hi, I'm happy. <laughs> I live in a quiet town outside of Minneapolis with my family. The real happy house is far from quiet. <laughs> I learned early on things are much easier with a little help. I also have a few tricks of my own to share. It's go time, people. Welcome to the happy house. The holidays are my favorite time of year because it's full of friends and family and celebrations. I am at Tonkadale with Jesse, and we are going to make something special for the holidays to decorate our homes and make it a little bit more festive, right? Mm -hmm. So what are we doing today, Jesse? So what we're going to make today is a birch log bundle. This can be used indoors or out and holds up to the weather. So we st we're starting with three. You know, you want different kind of sizes. You want something interesting, like a little knot here, there, and what I did is I kind of brush them off to get the flaky bark off and the, and the you know, dirtiness. So I want to put this on my front stoop, but I have a little, I've got a twist for you. I okay. actually want to do it like this, is that okay? Yeah, and you could even do like different heights, you know, if you wanted something a little bit bigger, kind yes. of like leaning up, kind of ski lodgy, like, yes. yeah, I think that'd be cool. So what's our first step? So our first step is to secure the logs. So grab your zip ties, and they're called zip ties because... So, because they just zippity zip. Zip them together. I love zip ties. So these are the longest you can get. So we're gonna put two together so we can make it all the way around. And my project is a little bit challenging. Logs are unwieldy. Okay. <clears throat> Takes a little muscle to get them under control here. Yes, it does. I now have my group of three. Wow, I beat you. I am just falling apart here. I kind of like that right now because you're so good at everything. There we go. Now it's on. Okay, so now just to we have to do it twice. Okay. Because then they won't wobble. Okay. So we're gonna do zip tie set number two. All right, okay. that's nice and tight. So I think we can use our wire cutters to trim off these pointy bits. So I like to keep mine for private use only so that my husband doesn't take it I know, that's and incorporate it into his thing. tools and. With my tools, people take them. I know. And then I don't know where they are. You lock them up. Okay. So what comes next? So now we have to select our ribbon. I believe you're doing a fall themed log bundle. So select your ribbon accordingly. And I've chosen, I love when black yeah. anchors things. And this actually could go into holiday as well, yeah. but I am going to do a fall ribbon. Right. How much do I need? So we need about three yards for the first part of it. And I'm gonna be doing a holiday. So I've chosen this traditional tartan plant. So the idea here is we're gonna um, just go around the zip ties to cover them up. And we're just going to tie a simple knot at the top or front of the bundle. Okay. <laughs> if you're the front, I'm the top. I so know, just right? a simple knot. That's all we're going to do. Just tie it and cover yep. my zip. So you're, you're a little aggressive here on the ribbon. I was a little aggressive with my ribbon. But that's okay. More is more sometimes. Like more when it comes more. to ribbon. Yep. Okay. okay. Now what? So now we're going to make our bow. Okay. So we take the rest of the spool here. Bow tying is a good life skill, so we need to practice our bow tying. So it's all in the pinch. So if you're right-handed, I always start with my left hand. I kind of pinch off where I want to make a tail. Like how much? For like six inches for a tail? Yeah, I like that. Okay. And then we're going to just do loops up, down, up, down. So okay. you kind of make a fist and you go like this. Yeah, okay. Like this? <laughs> is this really? Yeah. I like, uh, yeah, but you're going to pinch it pretty tight. Pinch. It's all in the pinch. It's They're happy. The pinch. Yeah. And then we're gonna go down. Don't worry about twisting the ribbon. This is double-sided and wire ribbon, so it's very good how for many, these kind how of many projects. Loops am I doing? We're gonna do three up and three down, so six total. So like this? Is this is this right? That looks that looks good. I try to keep holding it up and down so it's nice and tight. Oh yes. Then we're cut another tail. Okay. So a, a good sharp ribbon scissor is also important. Keep that locked away. Yes. So now. So now we're gonna put this right on top. Okay. And then we just tie another 
knot. So we tie the knot on top of our pinched bow yep. with my very long ribbon. Yeah, and so what I do uh, after I've cut my ribbon, just make sure the cuts are straight across. You can edit that a little bit if you got a little, and I just kind of hem it. Hold on. So you just give it a few folds. You hem it with the fold like okay. that. Yes, exactly. Okay, so now what? So we've so got these beautiful bows. Yep, we're gonna decorate the top. So what do you have over there? I have some sort of sprucey things and then these fall acorn things, which I really like with this ribbon. I think it's gonna be really pretty. I picked a mixed pick, so with that, I get the bonus of a cone and a juniper berry. Yes. So. We're gonna use our bolt cutters, okay. another good one. And um, we're gonna trim our tips, trim, you know, trim the stems of your picks, I don't know, just to a couple oh. inches long, because you don't want the stem sticking out the opposite side of the ribbon. Okay. Wow. Is that what's gonna happen when I do this? Maybe. Okay. <laughs> we forgot to wear the goggles this time. We need know. goggles? Yeah. So we're gonna swirl it in our glue pan. Okay. And then you just kinda glue it under your ribbon and to the log. Swirl it in my glue. Yeah. <gasps> like right in there, is that right? Yep. On mine, I want to add a little bling, obviously, bling. to dress it up. You, I think this is like, this is pretty traditional, pretty natural. Maybe you want to add some red. I chose this red. So again, it's just the same. Look how she cuts that, so easy. Okay. And you can even inter, like inter, inter, yeah. intermix it with the green, yeah, so it's cut, not as cut down the laser. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah, cut down the laser glitter effect. But yeah, so that kind of dresses it up and adds some flavor. I love both of these. And can we store these year after year? Do you think yeah. you can keep? Yeah, I would it? just put them in a Rubbermaid. I usually store my Christmas stuff in a um, like a plastic like container. a Sterilite. You know what I mean? Put it on the yeah. bottom and then put some light stuff on top. Thanks, Jesse. That was lots of fun today. I feel like I have a really great holiday decoration and I am ready to roll for the holidays. That's right. Up next on The Happy House, a fun project to do with kids. Make your own compost bin. I've always wanted to have my own compost bin but it seemed a little bit intimidating until I found an easy idea on how to make a compost bin that can be stored under your sink. So, I have some friends with me today and my son Chandler, and we're going to make our own compost bin. First, I want to ask you guys, do you know what composting is? Um, banana peels and it's biodegradable things. That is very good, yes. But then what happens when we put those things in a compost bin? Anyone know? Anyone? Um, well, what if you worms because it's like worms can go in there so what happens is we put those things into our compost bin and then they sort of break down and we can use them to fertilize the earth so for example you could use them to fertilize your tomato plants your flower plants all of that thing all of those things but the great thing is then we're not putting them into garbage garbage goes all one place so we want to decrease garbage as much as possible. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Landfill needs to shrink. Landfills need to shrink for sure. So who wants to help me with this compost bin I want to make? Me. Ava, check, Chandler, check, Emerson, check. Check, check, check. We're going to do it. Okay. The first thing we need to do, I think this is going to be the fun part. One of the fun parts is we are going to pound holes in the lid of this plastic container. So I have here a simple plastic container with a lid and it's the size of it is small enough to fit under my sink and I'm thinking like ooh something under my sink isn't that going to smell but we're going to have the lid with just enough holes for everything to breathe but it, then it won't be smelly. So we need to pound holes. Why do you need a pound? We don't want to close up all the air because everything needs oxygen to process. Oh, oh it's oh. hard. Oh. I don't, I just don't want to hurt people's fingers. I know, you don't want to hurt your fingers, you don't want to hurt my fingers. So we have finished pounding our holes in the lid so our eco environment can breathe properly and doesn't get 
sort of stagnant, and now it's time to learn what goes into a compost bin. Are you guys ready to learn? Yeah. I was born ready. I also was born ready. Perfect. Okay, so I'm taking the lid off. The first ingredient, and Emerson's gonna be really helpful, is we are going to put shredded newspaper on the bottom of this bin. Do you find any shredded newspaper? Okay, here, I'll give you guys can spread this around. Spread this around the bottom of our bin. So we just cut these into strips, and this is going to line the base of our bin. Can I have some more, please? Yes, you're gonna have some more. There you go. All right, that looks great. The next ingredient we're going to put in is a little bit of black dirt. And I have got that right here. I'm gonna pour this in because it's a little bit heavy. So that's perfect. All right, so we're gonna smooth that out, spread it around. Who knows what goes in a compost bin? Banana peel. Banana peel. Banana peel. Emerson, is there a banana, calling a banana peel? Check, banana peel. You wanna cut things into about two inch size pieces. So this banana peel needs to be cut down a little bit. Can you take turns or no? Or there's gonna be more stuff. Banana peel. Banana peel. Ava, do you wanna finish this up? Thank you, ma'am. Another thing that we want to add is eggshells. We smash these down. Why can't we do it with the hammer? With the hammer? <laughs> Pouring eggs in a compost oh, bin. bin. Even the juice is going in. Another thing that's really great for a compost bin is coffee grounds. Hey, does anybody at your house drink coffee? Yeah. Chandler, does anyone drink? Yes? Chandler, I do. Who, you drink coffee? She drinks coffee? Emerson, are there any coffee grounds in there? I basically was able to empty out my garbage or save things all week and find everything we needed to start our compost bin. Ava, will you pour these coffee grounds? Perfect, perfect. That looks like dirt. It does look like dirt. And so now we've got kind of a nice assortment of things in our compost bin. Also, um, fresh like vegetable peels like um, pepper rinds and carrot peels and things like that are great. So, do we have anything else in here? You know? oh. We've got some carrots. Emerson, will you put these carrots in our compost bin? We're using baby carrots today, even though we probably would have eaten these. But in general, carrot peels and peels from cucumbers and anything like that are great for your compost bin. Okay, so we've got those things in there. All right, so this looks like a pretty great compost bin. Would you all agree? Yes. We've got things in here. There's one more thing we need, and it's kind of a surprise, and I can't believe I'm going to let it live under my sink. Do you guys know what the worm. last? Flower. A worm? Worms. Worms are our worker bees in our compost bin. I've got some worms right here. No, it's gonna go ahead. not. I don't want to grab a worm. You do. I do. I do. <laughs> oh, there you go, Ava. Worms. You get some another day. So these worms are the workers. They break everything down. Ava, way to go. And they keep our compost bin active and help us break down all the things that we put in there. I can We're having it. fun with worms. Chandler, did you find some worms in there? They're fast. They're fast? All right, pour it all in. Pour the rest of this in. Oh, look at those worms. Chandler, pour your bin in. I will. Pour it. Oh. Can I see? Yes, you can see. Oh. And then the last step, Chandler, will you grab that spray bottle right there? Is we want to make sure to, yes. We want to make sure to water down and keep our compost bin moist. So Chandler, will you go ahead and spray in there? Yes, everyone can have like four sprays, four sprays. Okay, Ava. One, two, three, and. So you're gonna wanna make sure you add water to your compost bin regularly, okay? And now Emerson's turn. You did five. Two, three, four. <laughs> and then so we've got this moist but not wet and the last thing we need to do is put our lid on. Emerson, are you going to seal the deal here? Can I do it too? Well, both. We both can do it. Okay. Yeah. Oh, three. 
Cute. Are you gonna? Oh, ah. hey, hey. Yeah, it's perfect. Hey, thank you so much, all of you, for joining me and helping me make a compost bin. Now it's time to cool off. Time to cool off. <laughs> all right. Learn how to make your own compost bin by visiting thehappyhouse.com. Stay tuned. We're using upcycled materials and chalkboard paint to create a custom message center. Every household needs a central messaging station. It's a great place to post to-do lists, grocery lists, chore lists, and chalkboards are a fun way to do that because they can be easily erased. I am at Mama's Happy today with Amanda and she is going to show us all kinds of fun and unique ways to make chalkboards out of just about anything. Truly, with chalkboard paint, you can turn just about any surface into a chalkboard. Right, it has made it so easy. Let's get started. Okay, so here we are going to take, these are just an old window that I picked up. What have you done to prepare this window before we are going to make it a chalkboard? Okay, so um, up until now I've done absolutely nothing. Okay. okay. Now sometimes if it's, perfect, a, it's my kind of project. a surface like glass that's perfectly smooth, you want to rough it up just a little bit. So in that case you're just going to take your sandpaper and just skim it over the whole thing. Okay. 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 Oh, just like yep, and all you're doing is just giving it, you're getting a little grit on there so that the paint has something to stick to. Now, it doesn't feel like it's doing much, but it, it is. You won't necessarily see it, but you'll, trust me. And this is a helps. pretty fine sandpaper. Yes, this is 220, and you could use, I would say anything right around 220 is best. So you can see kind of the light scuff marks yes. on there. Okay. Yes. So then you have to decide if you want to use the um, spray can chalkboard paint or if you want the kind that you put on with a brush. Okay. Like okay. So this might be the easiest way to go. And this is just um, something you picked up at you like, can your get hardware that store? Any or? hardware store nowadays. Okay. So I was just about to ask, yes. do we have to tape? Okay. So with spray paint, I would definitely tape. And so I'll just give you any of the painter's tapes. What's so great about these is just that they are easy to take back off and they don't take the paint off with them. Okay, so you're basically just wanting to cover anything that you don't want the paint to get onto. Okay, so once you have that all taped. Yep, so up, tape all the way around, all the way obviously. Around. Yep, mm -hmm. and then you'd be ready to just put the spray paint on. All right, should we get started? Let's give it a try. And then how thick of a coat do I need? With spray paint, what you want to do is several light coats is better. Got it. Yep. Let me, I think it's because we're trying to do it at the right angle. See if you can do it easier that way. So just kind of a systematic approach, yep. covering the whole surface. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I won't make you go through the labor of okay. getting it all but finished. We basically cover this whole window. Right. And then we are ready to roll. So now this window actually had panes in it. Um, so this is fun because it's kind of already divided. Yeah. So especially for someone like you with four children. Okay, so then we picked up here right where you left off with the other one. So that one's fully painted. So let's just take, let's set it down. You can remove the tape. And then one important thing I have picked up along the way is the importance of, they call it seasoning your chalkboard. Yes. Okay, and what you want to do, many times people will find they write something on there and they erase it, but you can still see it a little bit. Yes. So the tip to have that not happen is to just take your piece of chalk and roll it over the entire chalkboard. The sound is terrible if you can stand it. And what that's doing is basically just getting a little bit of chalk dust in all those crevices mm -hmm. so that when you erase it now, it's going to come off easier. You won't see what you've written yes. each time. Okay, so then we'll just wipe that off. Okay, here I'll trade you. And so you really only need to do that before your first before you write your first thing on there. Okay. It gives it kind of a nice look. It's not that it doesn't look brand new. Right. Yeah, okay. Right. I like that too. You could write an inspirational message here. You could write an inspirational message. You could just simply write something that you would love for everyone that comes into your home to see. I'm writing a little message for you. Just a shameless plug. All right. Perfect. All right. So now what else do we have? another idea is that we can use other things. So Maybe you don't have an old window laying around, but maybe you're able to get your hands on um, 
cabinet doors. So this is another thing you can pick up at um, home reuse centers or salvage yards and many times as inexpensively as a dollar. And so what we did here was just painted just the center panel with the chalkboard paint and then painted the frame a different color. And so I've seen it done with this where you could do, you could hang actual three, you know, individual cabinet doors along a wall. Nice. This maybe you just have, you know, an, an old frame. Um, or here's another example of an old frame. So this never had anything in it. So I would just either have a board cut or you could just take any flat surface that you have. So in the case of the chalkboard, we wouldn't actually even need to use the paint. Correct. Easy project. Very easy project. And I love just the three little sections Yeah, that too. would be a really fun chalkboard. You could even do chalkboard on one and a couple pictures or something yeah. in there. So great. Okay, and then something like this was just an old print. So just imagine, you know, garage sale finds. You can find inexpensive ugly art mm -hmm. and you could either just paint right over the painting or you could take the painting out and whatever is behind it just Around. just paint that surface with the chalkboard paint so it doesn't have to be wood no so many great ideas and so many great ways to customize this message center for your house to be cute in kids rooms mm -hmm. cute in like an art area in your mm -hmm. house I mean awesome ideas the possibilities are endless All right. I love it thank you so much Amanda yeah thanks for having me fun with worms and slime stuff. Okay, worm, Ready? worm, get back here. <laughs> worm! No, don't hey, worry. you guys, thank you so much for helping me build the compost you bin. You better not run away from me. Are you no. going to be afraid no. to come to my house now that you know there's worms in there, Emerson? Mm, I don't know.